Hey guys! Welcome to a new LP. Why is it so loud by here? So that is weird. Like, it wasn't supposed to be that loud by my uh, headphones. But anyways, welcome to a new LP. And I, you guys have no idea how many games I've gone through. This had better be the one. I gotta find one to delete. Heh, <laughs> 69 deleting it. I'm not going to read with this 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 run through. Although I'm going to let all the cutscenes play, I'm just going to talk over them. And if you guys actually want to watch the cutscenes, then just turn off the well, actually I'll turn off the audio. It's re the reading game. It's uh one of them games. Yep. I I honestly can never I can never understood stand why never I, I, I never why Nintendo has to use text boxes and stuff. They never ever did read. And they're a kid's company, so I always thought they would be the ones to read it out loud if anyone. Although I think back at this time it was hard to make audio clips like that with voice, so it would have taken a lot of uh would have taken a lot of uh uh bits bits was it? This is, this is like 32 bit audio, I think. So there can only be 32 sounds playing at once. Which is also why uh, NES games go silent when certain things happen, because uh, to my understanding, there are only 8 bits of audio, which is only 8 sounds to play at once. And here we are. Uh, here we are. We're not playing yet. Also, this game escalates quickly, which I love. Like, this cutscene plays, and they just throw you right in the game. It's like, go ahead, play the game. And it isn't like they throw you right into a level, though. They throw you into a training level. But even then, they're just kind of throwing you in, which is kind of nice. You know, I probably should be reading this shit. But, uh, whatever. I guess I guess I'm not really gonna show much of the uh, abilities things. I was gonna explain them myself. Because, honestly, this game doesn't make very many, like, it does make jokes a lot, but it's nothing like where it would affect the commentary that well, so. Also, I just want to make a point saying, this game, uh, this is obviously like the same company that made freaking Conquer, so, but, uh, this game, freaking, uh, yeah. Like, I swear, Banjo Kazooie just goes straight, like, right to the edge of where kids' games are allowed to go at the time. Like, it had, the only reason it's not rated anything higher than E or T is because there's no swears or blood in it. And the second game has a little bit of blood in it, even. And this game also has some characters who have, like, open flesh showing. Not, not dicks or anything, but, like, uh... Missing body parts, is what I meant to say. That was officially the worst <laughs> fucking thing I've ever said. Also, the freaking game is loud as fuck in my ear. But yes, Banjo Kazooie. This game is incredibly classic, incredibly classic actually. But uh, yeah, this game does kind of go to the edge of where kids' games could go. You know, there are enemies who are like, like uh, missing body parts. Some enemies, when you kill them, they actually like break apart, and they're not like skeletons or robots or anything. Which is kind of nasty. Okay, so he tells you he's bottles, and he's going to tell you how to play the game if you've uh, ever played this game before. Which I'm pretty sure a lot of you have played this game before. I thought this was a very rare, unpopular game. But it turns out that everyone's played this game. It's really popular. And if you haven't played it on the N64, you've played the Xbox version. So. And also, I'm going to say this is the N64 version, not the Xbox version. I have the Xbox version, but I don't play the Xbox version because 
I don't have an Xbox in this room that is easily accessible. I'm gonna press A. Anyways, but yes, this game is, uh, what's the same? But yeah, this game, a lot of people have played it. It's really popular. I thought it was, like, a not popular game, but it turns out it's one of the bigger N64 games, so. That's cool. But, uh, it isn't like Mario 64 where everyone did grow up with it, though. Um, to my understanding, this game had only, like, recent, not really recently, a couple years ago, but it had only become popular as soon as the Xbox stuff started coming out. And then people realized the N64, people tried the N64 ones, they were better, and blah blah blah. No one really, I'm not saying no one grew up with this game, I'm saying a lot of people probably grew up with this, but, uh, let's learn how to jump. And basically he's going to tell you how to do different, three different kind of jumps in this game, which are all basic staples to N64 games. Um, every N64 game has at least two of these jumps. Every game has this jump, obviously. Only game that's in that jump is Legend of Zelda, and there's a reason. Because it doesn't don't jump in that game. That's the whole focus of the game is not jumping. Sometimes, some of half the puzzles involve not jumping. There's the double jump, which it's this game. I just want to make a point saying this game does not work like a normal game does with double jumping. Um, a normal game, when you double jump, you will jump in midair, and uh, from there you will get extra height to your jump. This game is different, though. This game is also jumping in midair is impossible. I just want to say that um, to jump, you must you have to obviously push your force against something and pull, push yourself off of it. I'm gonna do this jump real quick, and I'll explain that in a second. And yeah, you have to really push yourself off of something to jump, and you can't just push yourself off of nothing. This game, on the other hand, isn't like that. It doesn't even have the extra height to jump. As you can see, Kazooie, who is the bird, comes out and it extends your jump. And you see, it's not really an extra height kind of thing. It's an extra distance kind of jump. And this one here is another one that's kind of a staple to N64 games. The, the better platformers, at least. At least. At least is the hold the crouch and the jump. This game is called the flip-flap jump. And you know, Donkey Kong 64, Mario 64, all of them use that jump. That's another game that I play. And this is an extra honeycomb piece. Uh, six of them increases your health. And you see how I can explain things much faster than this game does. Um. But yeah, it's another game I need to play sometime. After I finish the Banjo-Kazooie series, I will do Donkey Kong 64. It is basically, it is by the same company, of course. Same, same company who made this is the same company who made Conquer and Donkey Kong. Old Donkey Kong Country games. And Donkey Kong 64 works just like this game does. Exactly. Controls and everything. Except it has Donkey Kong characters in it. It's, it I, I actually, there are rumors going around that Donkey Kong 64 was originally going to be Banjo 3 at some point. And, like, they threw Donkey Kong's face on there because they were told to make a Donkey Kong Country for N64. So, if that is the case, I don't mind it at all. I mean, it's still a really good game. And we, yeah, we needed a Donkey Kong game. And I'm just gonna go with the swimming. Pulling down B will make you swim fast but uncontrolled. A is slow but really easy to control. So, uh, yes. And this game, um, this game doesn't make really much of a difference. I mean, you just use B the whole time, it's fine. But in later. Banjo Kazooie games, you will get the habit of using a mixture of the two. Well, not later ones, Banjo Kazooie. The other ones don't have, because th there's only three other Banjo Kazooie games. That's two of them are racing games, and one of them is a Game Boy Advance game, which I will probably play at some point. I don't know about nuts and bolts. I'm not sure about that one. I, I never really got through the entire game. And I got to the end of the game. I just never got everything the game had to offer. And as much as I suck at that game, yeah, because I, I'm really bad at racing games, I would have to admit that was... I, I, nuts and Bolts. Everyone says Nuts and Bolts is the worst Banjo-Kazooie game. This is just tree climbing controls, by the way. And tree climbing is... is, is in N64 games, you just jump on the tree to climb it. It's another thing that a lot of N64 games used. Anyways, um... What was I saying? In, uh... Like, uh... Nuts and bolts, basically why everyone hates the game is because you're forced to use cars instead of going by foot. And you have to build your own vehicles to use. Honestly, is is you know, Rainer even said that was only a one-time thing. They were never gonna do that again, unless like it was really big and they were forced to make a nuts and bolts too. But you know, it was a one-time thing. They weren't gonna do that again. 
and is you know it, even if you didn't like it, you knew it was just just a test. And honestly, it was actually one of my it's not my favorite, but it was it was still a really good game. It wasn't like these ones, of course, but it was, it was, it was it had potential. I mean, it, it was still it was still really good for what it was, and no one no one takes note of that. This is exactly what I'm crouch and attack, and use it to destroy these rocks. I am doing a bad job explaining today. I just want to talk about this game. There we are. But uh, yeah, um, nuts and bolts. It was a really good game. I don't know why everyone hates it. It's just it's not the same, but it's still it's still a fun game to play. And this is just basically their attacks you're gonna learn how to do. And it's just uh, standing and attacking, moving and attacking, and being in midair and attacking. So uh, I'm just gonna perform these attacks real quick for them. And this is the first enemy in the game, Topper, who is just a carrot. Ouch. Ouch. Thank you for dying. But uh, yeah, this game, uh, this game is just, like one of the most nostalgic games I own. Like I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I actually never did grow up with like Super Mario 64 or anything. It was this game, Donkey Kong 64, and Kirby 64 were the three that I mainly grew up with on the system. And considering that, and Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64, that was the only Mario game I really played at the time. But, uh, yeah, considering that, this game is just as nostalgic for me as Mario 64 is for any other Nintendo 64 fan. And it's also the reason I'm not LPing Nintendo Mario 64 right away, is because I wanted to do this first if I ever did any of them games. I've already gotten Kirby 64 out of the way, because that was like my most nostalgic game I own. It's actually the first game I ever played, as far as I can remember. Don't ask why I know it. <laughs> and there we go, this is to demonstrate how if you get all six, you get a uh, health boost. Now, don't expect this game to be that easy as to where every level has a health boost in it, and there's plenty. For the rest of the game, there's only two hollow honeycombs per level. Therefore, meaning, you need to do three levels to get a health boost, and there's only nine levels in the game. So, there's only three more health boosts, but there is something later in the game if you get 100% with everything except the final boss fight. And I think two jiggies. Um, and obviously the hollow honeycombs. If you get about that far, there is a bonus you can get that will increase your health quite a bit. Actually, I think it doubles your health. But uh, I don't want to get too deep into that because it's kind of a spoiler. Although if you guys really, really want me, not really want me to just watch the whole I'll show at the end. If you guys really give a shit about the health boost or whatever, just look it up on YouTube before, or just go to the last episode of this LP. Because obviously it's just for the final boss. Is it? If you did good enough throughout the game, you can use it for the final boss to make it easier. But uh. It's kind of like in uh, Donkey Kong 64 when the last level has a time limit, and the time limit's doubled if you got all the uh, blueprints in the game. It's kind of like that, but it's the health boost instead. And so basically how the storyline goes... Oh, God, freaking, God, I do my Klungo voice. I don't read, but I'm going to read freaking Klungo's text because I do a freaking perfect Klungo voice. <clears throat> and I, I, I can do a pretty good Grunty voice. I've done it in other LPs of this game. But, uh, never anything special. And she's like, Oh, I pressed the start button by accident. <laughs> so basically, what happens is, um, she's in the machine. You, you gotta rescue her before she gets turned into an ugly bitch. That's, that's the thing with Banjo Kazooie, is it never has a serious storyline. And this is a Jiggy, which is kind of like your stars in Mario 64 or your golden bananas in Donkey Kong 64. In other words, it's your main collectible. You better look for these things. Because uh, that's how you progress in the game. And also, another thing I just wanted to mention is just that when someone yells at a game for being a, a collectathon, as they call it, I just want to make a point saying that that's not always a bad thing. I mean, if that's the focus of the game, a collectathon's usually a good thing. Like Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, it has hundreds and hundreds of items to get. But. It's just fun, you know, it's just like you enjoy looking for all those items, because 
it's, yeah, it's just like, it's, what the hell, why not? I enjoy living for millions and millions of the same thing. And it, it, it's just, like, this game, yeah, I just want to make a point, this game, most games with collectible items will say, like, you know, you don't have to get a single one of them to get through the game. They just make it even easier or more fun or just say you get 100%, say you did something with your life. This game is different. This game, you need to get a fraction of the hidden items in the level to move on. And, uh, alongside that, this isn't an actual, like, level, it's more of an area. Like, as you can see, there's no end to the level, it's just kind of a big maze, almost. Not even a maze, it's just a big open world. And I almost explain all the items in the game, I know what they're all at, so... This is a Jinjo, five in every level, you get a Jiggy for when you get all five. This is a Mumbo Token, which is, uh, there, it varies on what level you're in. And it's not, and they don't keep track of the Mumbo Tokens for some reason. I thought they would, but they didn't. I thought sort of was some way of going, but there is not, so... I'm probably going to have a walkthrough for them, opened on my computer at some point. Uh, okay, musical notes, 100 per level. They are, let me show you the tutorials thing real quick. They are mentioned. But there you see there's no mumbo tokens. And in the sequel they are mentioned. The mumbo tokens are mentioned in there. But they're not mumbo tokens or something else. There's only two per level. This game, there's somewhere between five to twenty per level. Also, I suck at this. I don't even know where any of the uh I need to learn where all the control is where mumbo tokens are. That's gotta be one of my first priorities. And if you don't know Gruntilda's Lair, it's basically like your overworld. Like, Spiral Mountain wasn't even a level, it's kind of like your training thing. And that, that that's a beehive, because you have a bunch of health. And basically, there's a bunch of collectibles in this game. Two of them that aren't mentioned are Mumbo Tokens and uh, the Mole Hills, which give you all the new abilities. But you have to get the Mole Hills to get 100%. It's kind of like the Jinjos, so... Um, they're not mentioned, because you're obviously going to get those all naturally. Those are eggs, they're not collectible, they're actually ammunition. Kind of like the- actually they are basically the ammunition from Donkey Kong 64, because you know everyone uses freaking uh, guns to shoot fruit shit. Well this game you shoot eggs. Out of Kazooie. And this is basically the Talon Trot, which allows Kazooie to walk up and down slopes. Which is very useful. And, uh, I'm not. I'm not a good commentary. Really, this game isn't. This isn't really a commentary kind of game. This is more of a just kind of enjoy yourself kind of game. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, the only reason I watched LP is this game is for nostalgia and the fact that other people have played it. And there's Jiggy, first Jiggy, there's 10 per level, and I think I've gone over everything in the game now. Shut up, bottles. Shut up, bottles. No one yet, you cook. Also, termites. They're not ants, they're termites. I don't know why, but I remember whenever I used to play this game, it would always piss me off when someone called them ants. And I'm like, they're fucking termites! You also, you can really good, you can jump up there. But you're not supposed to jump up there. That's not your goal here. And we're not gonna do that, because we are not speedrunning this game, so we are not gonna give a shit. This is not a speedrun. Also, I can't do this. I keep forgetting. This is, uh, I can call this, I call this Beak Buzzer. Jump into the air, press Z to send Kazooie slamming to the heart and to the floor. And yeah. So that means it's basically just ground pound. And yeah, another attack. Really useful. But we will show it in the next episode because we are done for this episode. See ya next time.